<laughs> is it usual that you do this without wearing pants all the time? Because I'm kind of weirded out here. <laughs> Rev those engines, chug those PBRs, and get ready for this episode of the Kate Talking X podcast as we connect with the owner and operator of one of the coolest bars in town, Hills Hot Rod Hideout. We connect with the one and only Hill Wozniak. Cue that music! Welcome to an episode of the K-Town Connects podcast, and I'm one of your hosts, Donnie, and I'm here with... Hi, I'm Jason. Hey, Jason, how are you today? I'm doing all right, Donnie. I want to uh, ding-a-ling-dang my dang-along-ling-long. Well, that sounds pretty sexual. Yeah, doesn't Um, it? Well, I'm getting turned on. Two of my favorite people are in the studio with us today. Oh, my gosh. Are they in your pants? Uh, Well, maybe by the end of the show. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're here recording at Luigi's Pizza Kitchen, located at 7531 39th Avenue, and they are open. Tuesdays through Sundays. Give them a call at 262-694-6565. Order those pizza pies today. Yep, and their full menu, and you can order online at Luigi's Pizza Kenosha.com. And make sure you follow us on all those social media outlets Facebook, Instagram, all the good stuff. Drop us a review on your favorite podcast player or on Facebook. Help us spread the word about the hottest podcast in town. Yep, and that is the K Town Connects podcast, the number one local podcast in Kenosha. According to the Donnie Stancato charts. And that's the only chart that matters to me. And topping the Donnie Stancato music charts is Dropping Daisies with their latest hit, Kenosha, My Hometown. What a great theme song. Thank Thank them for that. Oh, wonderful. I mean, what a jam that is, huh? Yeah, you can catch them this summer at Tuesdays at the Shell. They're playing, I believe, first week in August. And uh, maybe and they'll the play Fusion. that song. Yeah, uh, they, they Kenosha, should. my hometown. We just uh, we hung out at Fusion a little bit ago. That was a fun time. We got to know uh, Amy and Danny a little bit more. For sure, we're getting ready for our upcoming appearance. Mm-hmm. Yep, we are guest bartending at Fusion on July 23rd. It's a Friday night. Come on down to Fusion. Uh, we'll be bartending from 7 p.m. till bar close, and all money raised will go to Lemon Street Gallery well, and Well, all the space. tips that we make. The tips. The money that we raise off the beers will go to Fusion. Which is also a nonprofit. And then all of our tip money is going to Lemon Street Gallery and Art Space. Because, Hill, I don't know if you knew this, but I'm a board member on Lemon Street Gallery and Art Space. Oh, very nice. I know a lot about art. I know nothing about art, but uh, I'm on the board somehow. Well, I know you know about bartending. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I learned it all from you, my friend. Yeah, I try. But we'll, <laughs> we'll get into that later. Um, so... Uh, Hill, welcome aboard. It's hey, a, thanks. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. You've been on our list to get on the show for a while, and I just called you up out of the blue. Hill, we we'll want you on the show. I don't know if you're familiar with <laughs> it, but you are an interesting character, and you have so much good things going on at your bar. We just wanted to get to know you. Well, I appreciate that, and I'm uh, very happy to be here. Oh, thank you, thank you. So I go back a little farther here. You didn't actually grow up in Kenosha. Where'd you grow up in? I grew up in Spring Grove, Illinois, okay. just over the border. Okay, so not too far. No, no. So what were your thoughts about Wisconsin and Kenosha, like the cheeseheads kind of thing? Oh no, I, I've always loved Wisconsin. Mm, okay, yeah, All I'm right. more of a Wisconsin person than uh, Illinois, if you ask me. Oh. So oh. I grew up in a town of 700 people, and my backyard was a horse farm. <laughs> oh wow! And the kids I went to school with were farmers, and you know, just regular Joes. So mm-hmm. it wasn't. Uh, you know, like Naperville or something. Else. Yeah, yeah. And when you're growing up, you're kind of into uh, cars and bicycles, mechanic things like that. Yeah, my dad had a used car lot. Okay. Uh, All right. So I grew up every day of my life at the used car lot, and uh, I used to fix used bicycles and sell them on the car lot and whatnot. How do you sell used cars to a population of 700 people? Well, that was in the big town next door, Fox oh, Lake, of okay. 7,000 okay. people. Okay. Oh, All right. Nice. There we go. And a lot of the people coming up Route 12 going to 
Lake Geneva would buy the cars, you know, because they were cheaper than, you know, Palatine and Arlington oh, Heights. Yeah. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, helping your dad out selling selling cars and bicycles, is that where you fell in love with cars? Uh, pretty much, yeah. You know, and, and uh, he had a 1950 Buick when I was a kid, Ooh. Roadmaster, and we were going to fix that up, and it was a terrible, tragic fate for that vehicle eventually. <laughs> oh, but, no. Uh, I've actually replaced it in my collection now. So, oh. Yep. Oh, cool. You have a little collection of cars yourself, I hear. Uh, yeah, yeah. Most of them aren't running. Uh, it's a, <laughs> what I call a poor man's collection. <laughs> you know. What's your favorite car that you got? Uh, well, that 50 Buick Roadmaster is probably my favorite, but mm-hmm. the one I drive around a lot is the uh, yellow 57 Chevy. You'll see me driving Ooh. around town. Yeah, with I see it. that around yeah. town all the time. It's always parked right in front of your bar, Hills Hot Rod Hideout. That's located at 4327 17th Avenue. Yep. Yeah, go just look for that car. You know, open for business. Come on in. Get some drinks, right? <laughs> yeah, half the time, I think people look at the car and they don't even see the bar sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> it is a beauty. I'll tell you that yeah. much. So you were kind of, uh, as a teenager, you were kind of at a uh, crossroads in your life where your, your dad was owning the car lot and you kind of you didn't know where you're going to go, if you're going to take it over from him, if you're going to go on and do your own thing. Uh, what was your, uh, what were you looking at at that time in your life? Yeah, well, at that time, I was going to high school and uh, I was – Working at a hot dog restaurant uh, called Kahuna's in Fox Lake. Hot like, dog restaurant? That sounds uh, fancy. Yeah, hot dog stand. Oh, hot dog stand. Yeah, okay. hot dogs. When you beef. say hot dog restaurant, you picture meeting with a fork and knife. Hot dogs. Oh no, no, just, <laughs> just a junkyard dog with all the chili. Okay. On it oh, such, that, that sounds you know. like my kind of place. Yeah, yeah. So I did that for a long time, and then when I was 17, my dad had a heart attack, and uh, he lived. Okay. You know that one, and uh, I ended up going in the next day and. Uh, running the car lot. I taught my brother-in-law how to sell cars, and he helped me out. Okay. And then that fall, when I went to my senior year of high school, he came back on Your during dad. the day. Yeah. Okay. Then when I was graduating high school, my dad said that he was going to be closing the car lot, and he was sending me to college, which brought me to Kenosha. I came to oh, Carthage. Okay. okay. So he was, he was ready to retire. He sold the business and used the money to send you to college? Yeah, they had they had torn up Route 12. Uh, so people started taking 94 to Highway 50, and oh. uh, most of our customers were no longer coming through that area. Oh, okay. So the business had suffered terribly, and which is probably what helped lead to his heart attack as well. Oh. So it was pretty much done for. Okay. So he was ready just to be basically retired and, and oh. wholesale off other people's licenses. Okay. So then you come to Kenosha, you're going to Carthage. What were you studying at Carthage? Oh, all kinds of things. Uh, <laughs> Women? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I was uh, yeah, I was in a long-term relationship at, at Carthage, but I was a very busy person. I was a double major, double minor, uh, double major in business administration and marketing, and a oh. double minor in psychology wow. and history. Uh, I was on the IFC, Interfraternity Council Board, homecoming planning, president of my fraternity, plus I worked uh, part-time at Carmax all throughout college. Oh, wow. You know, and then in the summers, I would work uh, at the state park, Chain of Lake State Park, during the day and sell cars at night. Busy guy. Wow. So you're a class of what at Carthage? 2002. All right, all right. And what were your uh, plans then? What did you want to be when you grew up? If I can use my quotes there on your. You know, I always wanted to open up another car lot. Uh, growing up on the car lot, we would work when we had to work. But the rest of the time, we had nothing else to do but play cards, <laughs> play about Skippo. We had a pinball machine. We had a dartboard. Uh, you know, the mechanics and, and everyone else would come in and hang out and drink coffee. So it was really like a it was like a bar but with no booze. <laughs> you know? I like that. So then later on in life, when I found the bar business, I said, well, geez, you know, I get to play pool and throw darts and talk. And, you know, and when there's no one there, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You right. know, so. So, I mean, you came to Kenosha when you were 18, but eventually you turned 21. What's the first bar you went to in Kenosha? Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. I used to hang out at uh, Peg and Lou's all the time. Peg oh, and yeah. Right up at Carthage. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. uh, Clyde Stokes. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember Clyde Stokes. Oh, he played my 21st birthday party at Peg and Lou's. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And yep. uh, then Keith Stokes actually took mm-hmm. over from him. Uh, so Keith Stokes actually plays at my bar on uh, New Year's Eve. Yep. Oh. And two years ago before Clyde's uh, passing, he actually played New Year's Eve with his son at my bar. Oh, cool. And I felt like it was uh, full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Because, sure. you know, here I'm a, ki- a college kid. So if I ever own a bar, I'm going to need Clyde Stokes. And, <laughs> and here he is, and I got Keith, too. You know? Oh, cool, cool. So 2002, you graduated from Carthage, and, uh, you know, you could have went back home, but you stuck around in Kenosha? Um, actually, I, I, did you I moved around? home. Okay, did you? Okay. Yeah, I moved home for a short time, and I took the summer off, and one of my friends had passed away from uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Oh, and uh, I took the summer and I worked at the Kenosha Airport fueling oh. up jets. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, at the Kenosha Jet Center. 
Oh, so wow, that was, that, that's an interesting job. There, it huh? was. It was. My buddy worked there, and he got me the job, and we used to uh, – <laughs> probably shouldn't say this out loud. <laughs> but right. we used to take the trucks, the jet truck and the Avgas truck down to the fuel dump, fill them up, and then we would race back. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they're governed, so the first one to 32 miles per hour wins. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I could go into a couple of stories about that job. It was a neat one. It was a great summer playing with the airplanes. Uh, but I got out of that, and um, I got a job at Walgreens Corporate in the call center for WHI, Walgreens Health Initiatives. And Where uh, was that located? Uh, Half Day Road, Bannockburn. Okay. Oh, okay. I, yeah, so I, was, I moved up to Kenosha after I had started working there because I had an income again. And uh, I was commuting to Half Day Road every day from here. I was in the call center for about six months, and then they moved me up to uh, coding pharmaceutical insurance benefits. Oh, boy. Wow. That's, yeah. That sounds technical. It, it's very technical, <laughs> and uh, it, it was a, it was a good job. I hated it, you know, because I'm more of a people person. I like to talk to people. And right. I had a, what I called a cubicle instead of a cubicle, because <laughs> so I could reach both arms out and I couldn't touch either side, and I had a nice big window. But oh, okay. It got to the point where I could get my work done, and then I would take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so I had my my computer facing the window, and you know, take two hour lunches, and I was always late. It was terrible, but they kept paying me. Hey, that's all that matters, right? You're getting that paycheck, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and um, <laughs> so then, what what kept you in Kenosha? What did you love about Kenosha that just kind of kept you here? Uh, the small town feel. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got the uh, like Luigi's here. Yeah. Uh, you got uh, great places like Spanky's and Renzo's and mm-hmm. Ron's place and Tenuta's and and the beautiful downtown and the water. I just love sitting there and looking at the water. You know, if I got something to work out in my head, I'll just sit there and stare at it. And yeah. an hour later, I come out knowing exactly what I need to know. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's that feel good atmosphere of Kenosha that a lot of people don't really understand. But when you live here for a while, you feel it. You feel Kenosha in your veins, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and once <laughs> I know you start it sounds going to, corny, but <laughs> once you start going to like Olivers and stuff, right. and Hialeah's, and you start mm-hmm. realizing, you know, there's so much more than you know not to bad mouth other places but starbucks and applebee's and there's so many mom and pop shops here that the people work so hard at just trying to give you a good experience it feels good and like you're welcome in this town so one of a kind kind of uh, experience yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah yeah. absolutely love it. it's like chicago in the 40s you got alleys and mom and pop stores and corner taverns Mm -hmm. and so uh, when you're in Kenosha and you're you just, you're hanging out, you're going to school, I mean, you're very busy. You, you just gave your resume. You're doing a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, did you find time for fun? Uh, well, I, sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I mostly stayed on campus uh, in my earlier years because I just had too much going on. Right. Yeah, you're a very busy man. Yeah, yeah. But you were right there. Carthage is right there on the lake, like we all know. Is that kind of where you fell in love with the lake? Kind of oh, thing? yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, right we were there. right on the water there. I can go down there at any time during day or night. Yeah, yeah. You know. Cool. Yeah, it was absolutely beautiful. But you were asking me where else I went. But, you know, Peg and Lose was the main one. But mm-hmm. then I'd go down to, like, uh, patios and uh, the port. Yes, yes. You know, and uh, Harborside at the time. Oh, yeah, Harborside. That that was a rocking place as well. We've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. That was a very popular That's where place. I might know you're from, Patios. I used to bartend there. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah, because you're totally familiar. So 2002 through 2008 or so I worked there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yep, I've had a few beers in front of you. <laughs> I've forgotten more times than I can remember at Patios and mm-hmm. the port. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness Good gracious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wish I could remember all the Good times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to take our first break and we'll be right back to find out more about Hill and how he built his hot rod hideout yeah, right like after that. this. And we're back after our first break. Hey, Jason, what's going on this week in Kenosha? Oh, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Well, the Renaissance Fair kicks off its season on Saturday. This Saturday, July 10th, the Car Box is holding their summer parking lot party. They're located on Kenosha's north side at 1750 22nd Avenue. The party runs from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. and it has food, drinks, bounce house Jousting, I'd like to see that. Raffles, <laughs> some free car box merchandise, and more. Well, that sounds exciting. They're great sponsors of season three of the K Town Yeah, podcast. that's always like to promote their over there. Check out the car parking box. lot party, which yeah. sounds like fun. And then on Sunday, July 11th, the Kingfish play at 4 p.m. They play against the Fond du Lac Deck Spiders. Ooh, that's creepy. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> and you can stop by the Washington Park Velodrome on Monday, July 12th for the stock bike races. They start at 6 p.m. 
And then for the best local music, come on out to Tuesday at the Shells on July 13th. More live music. Lincoln Park Live kicks off their music series on Wednesday, July 14th with the Terry James Band and Christopher's Project. On Thursday, July 15th, the PB&J Concert Series continues with the Roots Reggae Band Unity taking the stage in beautiful downtown Kenosha at 54th Street and 6th Avenue. Two shows that day, 11 a.m. and 6 p.m., and you might see me down there. Ooh. And also next weekend, Country Thunder kicks off on Thursday, July 15th out in Twin Lakes. So if you don't have a ticket, you might want to avoid the traffic in that area. Yeah, watch out. <laughs> Country Thunder. Yeah. Woo! I, I hear just even if you're not a country fan, just being in the parking lot is a great time. That's what I've been told. I heard if you go to Country Thunder, you get laid. Hmm. I heard that. I don't know if it's true. Huh? Interesting. So Hill, I want you to prove that to me. Are you giving away free tickets? Uh, you know what? If you record you getting laid, I'll give you a free ticket. <laughs> oh, God, nobody wants to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, we're back here with Hill from uh, Hill's Hot Rod Hideout, and Hill. Uh, Let's let's dive into the bar business. So last here. time last we left you, you were uh, graduated from Carthage. You had this business management uh, thing on your belt, and you're kind of bouncing around at the airport at Walgreens, doing this and that. And somehow you found yourself where you are today. But how did you kind of get involved with the bar business? Did you kind of like just start drinking, start loving bars, or what? What happened with that? How'd you? Well, I, I definitely frequented a lot of bars when I was working at Walgreens. Okay. As boring as your day is, your night has to be more interesting. <laughs> and I always thought, well, geez, you know, I always have the parties at my house, and this would be great if I didn't have to get up for work and I didn't have to buy all the beer, too. And <laughs> <laughs> so years of planning came about. and uh, So you, you were like a, the, the party host? Yeah, yeah. It was okay. like a Greyhound station. Everyone would come over, and they'd say, okay, where are we going? You know, <laughs> go to here, Let's go there, and let's go you know, hit this bar and uh, have the after bars at my place. Uh, but I was selling mortgages while I was at Walgreens Corporate in uh, Lake Forest, <laughs> and my I had hurt my back, and it was to the point where I couldn't even sit down for two months. Oh. So I couldn't go to work, and I already quit. Walgreens told them to go f- themselves, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I, I got two epidurals in my back, and I was able to move around. And my buddy says, "Hey, you want to come on the road? We're I work for this marketing company out of Michigan, and we travel the country, and we got six months left on the tour." So I said, "Oh, that what sounds are you like fun." Traveling, doing what? I was setting up uh, a booth for Quest Communications at state fairs. Oh, okay. So then I'd have a regular schedule, and that night I can go out and explore the city. We'd spend about a month in each town. Uh, wow. Seattle. Uh, I was in Portland for two weeks. I was in Seattle for a month, Minneapolis for a month, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, Phoenix, and a lot of places I bet you have a million crazy stories. Uh, there, there's a lot of stories out there, uh, <laughs> some I probably shouldn't share here. <laughs> Uh, but what I also did is I looked at different um, drinking spots around the country and I saw what I liked and what I didn't like and I got exposed to a lot of different ideas and also I, it allowed me to understand what was really special about Kenosha and the tavern scene here Oh, wow. okay. because um, there's nothing else really like it anywhere. I agree. You know, you go to you go to Phoenix, Arizona, and everything's within 20 years. You know, you're going to strip malls for bars, mm-hmm. and everything's ultra modern. You know, uh, you're at Applebee's and things like that. Huh? Exactly. You yeah. know, and everything's a sports bar, sports, 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 sports. <laughs> you know, my bar is kind of like an anti-sports bar. Yeah. You know, if there's a local team playing and someone wants to watch it. And I can get it on the TV. I'll put it on. Yeah. But you know, you can't someone's got to request it pretty much. Someone's <laughs> got to request it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And if Barrett Jackson's on, sorry, you have to go to the other end of the bar and watch <laughs> on the back TV. <laughs> you know, no offense, of course. <laughs> yeah. When I came back from being on the road, because the tour was over, I was going to go back out again, and uh, it actually fell through. So I found myself in St. Charles, Illinois. I left everything I owned in Kenosha, uh, in a storage bin. When it when that other job fell through, I ended up applying for a job as a bar manager at this place called Real Time Sports, which was of course a sports bar. <laughs> and uh, yeah, take what you can get, right? Yeah, they took me on, and I worked there for quite a bit of time until they changed the GM. Is and, that where uh, you fell in love with sports? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that down in St. Charles? Yeah, St. Charles, Illinois. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was actually half of an old grocery store, oh. two stories with a big. Uh, uh, balcony around and we had about a 1300 person capacity wow so the place was huge and uh that's where i cut my teeth on the bar business and then uh 
after they changed the GM, he brought in his own crew, uh-huh. and I started bouncing for a, a large restaurant group down there called uh, Rookies and Village Squire. So I worked for them for a while. Uh, in the meantime, so you're just bouncing the door working security? Yeah, bouncing door security. <sighs> so and that's then, like the worst job in the world. I don't know. Oh yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it's the most boring. I, mean, I I worked at the rave a few times doing security and just standing. And I guarded a stairwell for six <laughs> hours. Oh, I hated it. It was so miserable. <laughs> well, th- this was an interesting group. So yeah, I, I had a little bit more fun than okay, that. Okay, all right, good. good. Good, good. <laughs> then I uh, I saw this thing. I wanted to move back to Wisconsin. I was always trying to get back to Kenosha. That's why I left everything in storage up here. Because you knew you were going to come I knew back. I was coming back. Mm-hmm. You know, this was my home. This is where I, I wanted to be. Yeah. And uh, I actually found this uh, advertisement on Craigslist that said, hey, you know, win a restaurant. We're doing a TV show. It's going to be a competition. Hmm. And uh, three hours later, I said, well, there's no jobs that I can do, so let me apply for that. Hmm. And they called me up, and I was picked to be one of 200 people invited to Madison to – you know, go on screen and see if they want to the TV yeah. show. So I was picked to be one of 12 contestants on this TV wow. show to win a restaurant in Fitchburg. Oh. So I was traveling up there quite a bit, and then eventually it, it fizzled out, and it was never bought, so oh. it, it died. Oh, okay. But the director called me up one day, and he says, hey, my wife just took over um, management of this place on Washington Island, a, a bed and breakfast hotel restaurant. Do you have any, you know, any interest in going to Washington Island for a few months? Hmm. And I said, well, geez, that sounds like fun. So I went up yeah. there, waited tables, lived on the island for two and a half months, and it was wow. great. Uh, and then when I came back, the the new uh, rookies opened up, and I went over there and started managing for them. Uh, and then I moved around between Elgin, Hoffman Estates. I helped them open the new store in Huntley. And then I went down to uh, a place called uh, Q Bar in Plano, and I worked there. Uh, and then I worked at the Broken Ore for about a month. <laughs> that was an interesting one. <laughs> Where was that? Uh, that was in Barrington. Okay. Yeah, a real neat biker bar on the river. So I, I jumped around. I worked at a lot of different bars and restaurants, and and they were all they they turned into a nightclub at night, and they were open till three in the morning. So you had bouncers and what I called the octo tender, you know, four bartenders, eight arms. <laughs> and uh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's shot girls and DJs and fights and all this other bullshit, and uh, you know, thirty five TVs and every sports yeah. you can ever want and. Uh, so when this opportunity up here came in, I said, holy smokes, this would be perfect. You know, I, I could just have a nice, quiet neighborhood tavern. Yep. I don't need to have this rah, 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 you know, pack the doors, you know, let's have DJs. But the nut every So night. did any of those yeah. old bars you worked at have that kind of flavor, that kind of rockabilly flavor? That no. Nothing. No, never, not at all. Not at so all. So you're huh? kind of piecing the good things from all these bars, piecing the good and the bad out of it in your mind. Like, what I want I, I have what this I didn't idea want. of what I want. Yeah, yeah. And plus my time on the road traveling around and seeing all the different bars mm-hmm. from Seattle to Phoenix, you know, I, I, I figured out what I wanted to do. You know, and that's that's why my bar is a little bit different. Okay. You know, and so how did this come about the the, the bar that you're the Hills Hot Rod Hideout? How did this yeah. all happen? Yeah. Well, What's... you know, I was I was really happy when I came to town uh, when I wasn't living here and Motor Alley was here, mm-hmm. oh. and I was like, finally, somebody opened yeah. up a rock and roll rockabilly bar. It was awesome, <laughs> and I used to go there quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, that was located on 52nd Street, yeah, and 52nd. about 14th Avenue, somewhere right around yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, next to the old Jills. Yep. And now yeah. it's the vintage on 52nd. Yep. Um, is it a bar again now? It's it is a bar okay. again. Right, yeah, great. Yeah. And uh, Mike owned it, Mike Muldoon. Uh, was a friend of mine. And uh, it was a great place, and uh, unfortunately the place closed. When I moved up here and I, I well, when I came back and I found the old Kazachas for sale, mm-hmm. it needed a lot of work. But I said, you know, I could make it something like that. Was it you still know? open then? It was still operating. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but was Kazach still involved or was it his he, family? It, it was his wife. Okay. And, uh, he, he would work some, but I think he was uh, pretty much done with the bar business at that time. Well, he was one foot in the grave. I mean, no offense. To yeah, him, but, yeah. Uh, he did die that fall that I, after I bought the bar. He grew to be 80, right? I think it was. Oh, was I'm not sure. How yeah, I think it was a bit He was 80. He's yeah. like, I can't take yeah. it. I sold the bar. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he wanted to close his estate and mm-hmm. make sure that his wife, Marilyn, uh, was be. set up. Yeah. It, it, actually, his son, uh, Steve, had finally agreed to take over the bar. Oh, and then okay. he was mowing their lawn and hit an underground bee's nest and unfortunately succumbed to bee stings. Oh, oh really? Oh, wow. Right on the right in their yard. Oh. <laughs> so then when I came along, they needed someone to buy the bar because they just, you know, they couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, they ran that for a long so, time. So, yeah, well, yeah, what the history of that building there? Because that building seems like it's been there forever. Oh, yeah. It was uh, actually built in 1923 as a candy store. Oh. Uh-huh. And that's during Depression. Uh, Depression and... Um, 
Prohibition. Prohibition. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Twenties. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's actually uh, the, there's one window on the side of it that's been left there. It's boarded up, but that was actually a drive-through liquor store. Wow. During Prohibition. Oh, okay. And in the basement, there's kind of a secret where it could be hidden, a secret room off to the side where I think they actually store the booze and make oh, it. Oh, cool. Yeah, so a lot of history in that building. And then, of course, right after... a candy after, shop with quotes. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's a great front because people are coming in and out. Yeah. You know, you got a reason for people to come in and out. Yep. Who knows what they're doing when they're in there. Well, then you had that whole back section because the bar is kind of split, kind of has the front area and the back area. Yeah, the back area was added on after that. Oh, I was think. it? Okay. And it was, uh, from what I understand, a restaurant at one time and a bait shop because there used to be a river behind there, which is all underground now behind underneath uh, Wis- Wisniewski Park. Oh, yeah, because the pike used to come right through there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, because Acho always said that was the worst thing they ever did was cover up that <laughs> river. She used to go out there and go fishing. Oh, yeah, I bet. Right in the backyard. Oh, huh? yeah. It's probably beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah, beautiful park though. If, if you yeah. if you're listening, and you haven't been to that park, go check it out. Take your dog for a walk, throw the frisbee, kick a soccer ball. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice park. Yeah. So um, so when did he open the place? When did he take uh, it over? Do you know? I believe they opened in 1968. Okay. And wow. they had it until I bought it in 2015. Wow. And what was their thing? Are you, uh, I'm a turtle, or a, it was a turtle club. A turtle club, right? Yeah, and if someone asked you, "Are you a turtle?" You have to say, "You bet your sweet ass." <laughs> <laughs> and everyone had a membership card, and it's actually there's a lot of bars in the country. There was like eighty or hundred bars that were turtle clubs. Wow. Yeah, oh. so it was something they had to like register and huh. you know. That's crazy because this is like way before the internet when the, and that yeah and they, they still form this network around the country of this kind of thing. It's kind of cool. Do you still get somebody in there who says it. Oh, I tell you what, people love that, the history of that place. <laughs> yeah. I always hear about Marilyn and Kazach and Kazach and, you know. Well, maybe you know, because Kazach wasn't his name. No, it was David. David yeah. Lanier. So where this where did the name Kazach come from? You know, I mean, it's his Kazach. nickname, I guess, huh? No, that was his dad's favorite word. I think it was the way he could swear <laughs> oh, around like kids. That. Like, ah, <laughs> Kazach, instead of fuck, you know. I remember he would always say, like, a cheers, he'd say, Kazach, to right. drink. I, I, I got drunk there a few times back in my younger <laughs> days with Kazach, and he was he was a hoot to drink with. And, it's similar to Mark Clark from uh, South Park. Remember that old episode where... The people from Marklar came and every oh, other word right. was Marklar. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look at that Marklar. And hey, hand me the Marklar. Yeah, hey, yeah. yeah, it's Kazach. Hey. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. So we, was that intriguing to you to buy a bar with a lot of rich history in Kenosha? Well, yeah, I didn't want to see it get turned into uh, you know a triplex or a duplex, mm-hmm. you know, which are a lot of the bars in the neighborhoods you drive through and you can just see what. Yeah, because you're a neighborhood bar. You're in the middle of a neighborhood. Oh yeah, uh, kitty corner from a church and right, right down the road from a school and right surrounded by parks. It's actually a beautiful part of town. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. So when you were looking at bars, was that your first choice, or did you look at a couple other bars? There, or? I'd I'd spent about two years. Researching oh, bars for sale. Wow. And I had a friend that we were going to buy a bar and split it. And then uh, right before we were going to write an offer on a bar, he says, I'm sorry, I can't. And something came up family-wise where he couldn't do it. So I spent the next year trying to find the best option I could find mm-hmm. that maybe I could do by myself. And uh, he actually came through and helped me out uh, with the down payment on the place. Oh, very okay. nice. Yeah, a very generous down payment, which I... Happy to say, I've just about paid off. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right. Were there any other local spots you were looking at that you were seriously considering? Uh, yeah, I, I, you can mention. I, I don't know if I want to mention them, but okay. there was a few that were for sale mm-hmm. at the time, okay. and they were they were good deals and they were great opportunities. And uh, uh, but I'm really, really happy with where I landed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I couldn't have picked a better bar, honestly. <laughs> and it was the underdog. It was totally the underdog. Yep. And you've yeah. you've turned it into a success. Yes, thank it was you. Kind of in rough shape at the time when you took it over, though, huh? Yeah, yeah, they. Uh, they they had let it go quite a bit. Um, well, he was I don't getting older. Him. He didn't have yeah. He didn't have the. They couldn't do it themselves, yeah. you yeah. know. And uh, did just, you get a sweet deal on it? I got a pretty good deal on it, but it needed a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And luckily, I had a lot of friends in the trades that could help me out mm-hmm. and uh, trade beers for you know. For screws. services. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> you know. Now, I know you had that nice backyard over there where we're looking at the, 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 the park and stuff. Any thoughts of getting like a beer garden out there, getting your outside license? You know, I would absolutely love to have that opportunity. And I recently contacted my uh, alderman mm-hmm. uh, because I had had my first year in business, Handlebars and Bars King. Oh, yeah. And so I applied for the daily, the, the one day extension to mm-hmm. have music outside and have beer outside. And they granted it to me. Mm-hmm. And then two years later, when it was my turn to be on Handle Bars, bars Again, I went to the city, paid my fee, and then they came back and said, oh, you can't have it. Mm. I Ugh. said, well, why not? They said, well, it's a RG1 
versus an RG2 neighborhood, which loosely translated residential grade single family uh, or duplex, which that's got to be an old, old yeah. <laughs> record because, yeah. you know, I'm surrounded by duplexes and triplexes. So I've actually contacted my alderman, David Paff, and uh, hopefully we can find a, a path to, uh, oh, good. Yeah, that to would... maybe allow that to happen. Cause yeah. I really have a lot of nice, beautiful space out there, and I'd love to have people. You do, you do. It's, you do, it's yeah. a great back area. I mean, Thank I, you. I'll put in an email to the alderman. Well, especially in the daytime. I can see, I can see not wanting people out there at midnight. You know, and I don't want people noise. out there after 10 either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want them in the bar. Yeah. Right. But if you get a band playing out there at 5 in the afternoon, hey, that's great. Oh, I mean, it'd be awesome. Yeah. Or even to have, a, you know, 20 cars show up and you can stand outside and drink beer and look yeah. at the cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that's how, that's how my crew rolls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you pull up, you got to, I don't even care if I'm selling the beer. They got beer in their trunk. We pull up and <laughs> yep. everyone's talking and having a good time. <laughs> And that's you know? what it's all about at Hills Hot Rod High, a oh, good yeah. time. Exactly. And I'm reluctant to have a car show there because I know that the people I know are going to bring beer and want to drink outside. <laughs> and I have, to, I have to run around like the, the fun police and be like, you got to put that beer away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So, Hill, I remember almost six years ago to the day. we we known each other for a long time. Very long time. And we, uh, one of our drinking spots was Dolls Tavern. I lived oh, yeah. upstairs there, and that's how we, I believe that's how we met at Dolls Tavern. I'm pretty Tavern. sure. I'm pretty sure. And, you know, we, we'd get loaded, and we'd have a good time. <laughs> and I remember you came in there one June evening, and yeah, we're just shooting the shit, and you're, you, you had that shit-eating grin on your face, you know? <laughs> I was like, what's up? You said, I, I bought a bar. I said, what the f- <laughs> yeah, that day I signed yep. the paperwork that morning. Yep, and you told me that you bought kazachas, yeah. and we got some Jameson shots. Yeah, we you bought good, shots. Yeah, we had a good old time. Oh, yeah. And I was so happy for you because I knew it was such a passion for you, and I knew you would excel at that. And well, congratulations. I mean, Thank I, you. six years too late, right? Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I'll never forget that day. I think I even have a picture when it comes up on my Facebook memory of that. I mean, uh, yeah, of us sitting at the bar, I, mean, I think. It's, yeah. it's such, a, such a great memory and such an experience for you and thank you for sharing that with me at the time even though we were drunk we probably you know, <laughs> we, you know, but we'll always remember it was a great time Hills Hot Red High Road is open uh, Monday through Saturday five-ish to bar close yep I always so, say if it's if I'm not there at five just wait a few more minutes yeah, you'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and they're located at 4327 17th Avenue you got a, a little parking lot now there on the side huh? yeah yeah I was okay. actually able to purchase the house to the south of me okay uh, which was a terrible eyesore and uh, <laughs> i put a new roof on it new windows new siding and made it look real nice and i was able to turn the front yard into a parking lot oh, oh very nice so it holds about eight cars so that you know relieves some of the neighborhood stress okay. of the so uh, parking do people live in the house you rent out the house yeah yeah okay. and oh. they, they're cool with people parking in the front of the house? well they, yeah they have right. to be right, right? <laughs> well it's, you know they, they kind of know what's going to happen well, I guess you have to cut the grass, you know? yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> they still have the backyard in the park oh you know? yeah cool oh yeah for sure yeah, and their own parking on the side there so it works out pretty good i yeah, see so you're helping out the neighborhood as well i mean yeah, it's a friendly it up a neighborhood bit. bar yeah yeah okay so I have a question for you, Hill. Um, we were looking at some of the reviews online of your place. You know, they're all raving about the place. So one person says your pizza is on point, which is good. You know, it's, oh yeah. So what kind of pizza do you serve? You have like frozen pizza, right? What, yeah, actually, I, I figured if I have one thing to offer, it's going to be the best I can find. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm a big guy. I like my food, and I found this pizza called Cozy's. And it's out of the Mauston area. Okay. My distributor is out of Baraboo, which is by the Dells. Mm-hmm. So I am actually able to get that small town pizza delivered to me. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. And you know what? And it is so good. It oh, yeah. People fantastic. rave about it. So. Oh, it, it is. It'll blow your mind. Oh, yeah. and, and I got to ask, what pinball game do you have in there right now? Yes. Oh, geez. I believe it's Judge Dredd right now. Oh, okay. I All love right. that one. Yeah. Well, we've had that one for a while, so I believe uh, I, I used Midwest Amusements, mm-hmm. and Nello was supposed to be bringing me another one here pretty soon when he gets it done. Not a lot of bars have pinball machines anymore. Oh, and I don't even know why. I, I love them. so oh. fun. Oh. I mean, I go to a bar and I see a pinball machine. I'm staying here for at least two hours. Right. You know? <laughs> I, I actually mean, have pinball injuries. My hands get all <laughs> stiff and I'm holding on to it so hard. I mean, I'll play for hours. Growing up on the car lot, we had a pinball machine. Yeah. yeah. So I'm a pinball guy. Nice. So you got pinball. You have a couple dart boards. Uh, you have three pool tables. Yeah, 75 cents. Three wow. Three pool tables? Three pool tables. In there? Wow. And only 75 cents. 75 cents, wow. yeah. So you got two in the back room there, I assume? Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, two tandem in the back and one in the main yeah, room. Yeah, wow. Well, very nice. And you have some leagues going on once in a while? Oh, yeah. I, I, I love having leagues. I'd rather have leagues all week and have a slow Friday and Saturday, <laughs> you know, to be honest with you. Wednesday night, we do uh, the eight-ball fun league. 
Um, I'm always looking for teams, so if any teams want to come over, and uh, I'd be happy to sponsor darts. I usually do have a couple teams on Tuesday nights. Okay. Uh, right now for summer, I have a, a Monday night Midwest Amusement dart team. Okay. Uh, and then I also do uh, in-house Friday night pool league. Oh, oh cool. so then you're there every week. It's all the same people. I like the in-house leagues. Yeah, yeah. You play someone three games. It, it we have it right now. It's five dollars. It includes your three games of pool, a courtesy drink, and, uh, and then there's a banquet at the end with prizes oh, and yeah. food. Yeah, nice. You know, so it's actually a really good time, and people get to know each other, and it gives you that that community sense, that sure. good feeling. You know? An excuse to get out of the house too. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what I needed when I went and shot, shot darts a few years ago. I needed like, an excuse to leave the house. Yeah, I gotta so, go. I yeah, gotta yeah, go. yeah, I gotta get out of here. Have a few beers, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so I'll just check out Hills Hot Rod Hideout Facebook. If there's a live music coming, you just check that out and you can see who you got booked coming up. Yeah, yeah. And, I tr- yeah. and if you like the page, I don't try and spam it. I don't put out <laughs> advertisements three times a day or You have a lot a of week. cute pictures of dogs on there. Uh, you know what? Uh, if, if your dog is very well behaved and isn't going to piddle on my floor, then I don't mind you bring him in during the week. <laughs> okay. All Weekends, right. I try to stay away from it. Yeah, well, you it's know. not too busy, so, huh? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there's a couple dogs I know, and they come in to visit. And <laughs> oh, cool. They like to eat the Slim Jims, you know. <laughs> oh, and I did add candy cigarettes. So if you need some candy oh. cigarettes out there, $1 pack. Wow. Yeah, we got all I know the- they still made those. I didn't know either. <laughs> but I was able yeah. to get a hold of a I box like of them. Cool. That kind of fits your theme, too. Kind yeah. Of, you yeah. Know, even if you don't smoke, you can still look cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. roll it up in your pocket you know, <laughs> or your sleeve. Awesome. And I would feel really bad if I didn't bring this up. Our good friend Keith Stokes. So you carry Monte Stokes lighter cases. I fill, sure do. Fill us in on what is this? Well, he makes these cases and he doesn't really do it for profit because he says, I work for a dollar an hour when I make them. <laughs> but they're quite neat. And that way, uh, if you know, if you have a BIC people always steal it because it just feels like a bic in their hand they just put in their pocket <laughs> yeah. but when it's got a leather wrap case on it you know ah. you don't lose it as fast ah okay and people actually collect them because oh you got new ones let me see what's this or what's that you know uh oh, cool <laughs> and what do they run there uh, eight dollars oh, okay not bad you know okay. it's a brand new bic in there and it's a reusable case oh, okay you know when the lighter's gone you just slide it slide out put, it a, new yep, put one a new one in there cool yeah cool. and they wear in real neat you know, after one's been in your pocket for a few years, you're like, holy smokes, this thing is so cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to take our second break, and we'll be right back with the Quick Connects with Hill Wasniel of Hill's Hot Rod Hideout. And we're back with K-Town Connects, the number one podcast that you're listening to right now. Yes, the number one <laughs> podcast that you're listening to right now, right this second. And, and next up is our Quick Connects. And Quick Connects is brought to you by Equinox. And for the past 20 years, Equinox Boutique, 5901 6th Avenue, have been specializing in taking care of your body and soul through their health and wellness offerings of massage, facials, and products. More recently, Maria at Equinox has begun to expand her love of plants, and her boutique has grown to include vegetables and herbs for your garden, as well as beautiful indoor plants and more to bring beauty into your life. Because we all know it's the simple things in life that can brighten our days. So why not pick up a new houseplant? You can call it, uh, let's see, uh, you can call it uh, Hill. (laughs) So stop on in at Equinox, 5901 6th Avenue A, and talk to Maria about expanding your household with a new green family member. Yeah, I like that. So it's Quick Connects. Hill, you ready? I'm I'm always ready. Oh, wow. I like that. Favorite park in Kenosha? Favorite park? Hmm. Anywhere I park my car, I guess. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Anywhere yeah. with parking spaces. <laughs> What's the name of the park behind you? Uh, Wis- Wisniewski Park. Okay. Can you spell that? It, it's common spelling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start using that one. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> with a ski at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your favorite Kenosha museum. Oh, I would say uh, the Kenosha History Center. Ah, yeah. I can see that's, that. a, that's a great museum there. Chris, oh, Chris awesome. Allen from the History Center. I always give them plugs because I just love the History Center. So right much. now they have the AMC Concord Levi edition, mm-hmm. which is all done in denim interior. <laughs> it's crazy. you got to see it. It's Sounds nuts. durable. I yeah, was kind of bummed that the doors weren't open, so you couldn't. You, had, you could look through the windows, but you couldn't really. Right. You know, I wish the door was open so you kind of really see inside and check out the denim. You know, I really like about them is they do uh, on Facebook. If you like their page, mm-hmm. they have a lot of Kenosha history. Oh, I love that. Up with the pictures and everything. I, every day I look forward to It's one to of my that. favorite things on Facebook yep. is seeing so their stories. So if they're listening, their... thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Because that's uh, 
mainly Chris and John, yep. John Martin. Yep, they put that together. Yeah, I that. mean, they do a great job with that uh, Kenosha history. I always have follow-up questions page. to drill them with, too. I'm like, <laughs> well, what about this? Yeah, they're like, oh, God, another this notification from Jason? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I have questions. I am trying to pitch you to get on the board there at the History Center. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I pitched Chris Allen that last week when I talked to him. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Favorite pizza place in Kenosha? This oh, is a tough man. one, I know. I tell you, there's so many good ones. I mean, you got Paz, you got Renzo's, you got Luigi's, of course. Uh, Durango's has that sheet pizza. Mm-hmm. So when I have parties at the bar, I do that. Uh, Cortez's is excellent pizza. I mean, geez, how can I even pick one? You're right, you can't. That, <laughs> was, that was the test. Oh, you geez. passed. <laughs> good. <Yeah. laughs> Never had a pizza in my life. <laughs> Here's a follow up Ranch with your pizza? Uh, no. Okay. No. No. I had to throw that one that's, back in there. That's horrible. That's a horrible question. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite famous Kenoshan? Oh, geez. Uh, would that be uh, the guy from Happy Days, Al? Al Molnaro. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. For taste and more, it's encore. Well, that was my line. <laughs> <laughs> what is the last great meal you had in Kenosha? Oh, man, I tell you what. Uh, I went up to uh, Cortez's. Ah. Mm. Uh, on Sheridan Road right before Highway E. Yeah. And uh, it's a mid-century modern feel, and they've got a nice swanky, curvy bar. And uh, I'm not a wine drinker, but they, they love their wine there. But I had a nice ribeye. Um, but I usually go there on Fridays for the fish fry. Nine ninety five, oh. all you can eat with the salad. I mean, you really can't beat it. No, yeah. you can't. That's yeah. a great place. And I, the bowls of pasta, you could split it between two people. I haven't been there in years. I didn't know they were still open. Oh, you got to go see uh, Mena and Achille and, and just check it out. Uh, just give it another shot. Yeah. This is great. Okay. And they've been there 20 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And they got the banquet hall in the back for all of your wedding or, you know. Party needs. It's cool. It's cool. That's a classic building too. It's got that old school kind of supper club feel. Oh, yeah. from what I remember. Oh yeah, you walk in and it's just a nice old, nice yeah. old restaurant. You know, I love sitting at that bar. They got the leather arm uh, rest. Oh yeah, on nice, the bar nice, and stuff. Nice. Yeah, great well, place. Definitely gonna check it out. Yeah. We'll see you there on Friday. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, where in Kenosha would you recommend someone going on a first date? Oh, geez. Hills Hot Rod Hideout? Well, of course, my place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, they can go in the back and, you know, have a nice spot in those booths Ooh. and play pool on their own table mm-hmm. and no one's going to bother them, you know? Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. A, I would I would go to Cortez's, have a nice dinner, dinner, come over to my place, have there some drinks, go. play mm. some music, All have right. a good time. On that free jukebox. On the free yeah. jukebox. Sounds like a good night. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Hill. Now you've, you've still been here for like 20 years off and on, so yeah. I get this question you can probably give me an answer for. Which now-closed Kenosha business do you wish you could bring back? Oh, man, I tell you what, probably the Bartley House. Ah. That ah. was such a great place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too bad they had to close down. That place has been there forever, huh? Like yeah. 50, yeah. 60 years they were there. Yeah, they were ready to retire, and uh, I guess, they yeah. said that was it. Yeah. That kidney bean salad, that's where it was at, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow. and the cottage cheese. Yep. Oh, yep. man. Now that was a real supper club there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, the Merck's cheese on the bar when you came in. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had to take it away from me. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so there's other people. Oh, I'm getting hungry, man. Uh, all right, Hill. In which Kenosha bar do you think you spent the most money at? Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, I used to go to Dow's quite a bit, Peg and Lou's. Uh, I love going to the port. You know, geez, I spent a lot of money at Lucci's last night. That was a great time. Because <laughs> I'm closed on Sunday, so I have to go somewhere. 69, you know. 29, 39th Avenue. Yeah, go see Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Say hi. Tell her Hill sent you. Yeah. Hey, no, tell her K-Town Connect sent yeah. you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> that was a test. <laughs> Let's see if you're on it. <laughs> All right. And the final one we have, uh, Big Star or The Spot? Oh, geez. I tell you what, Big Star is right in my backyard, and I definitely enjoy it. But I I was uh, first introduced to the spot, so mm-hmm. it was, that was my first love for the the drive-ins in town. Oh yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, that was our quick connects. Brought to you by Equinox Boutique. Oh, well, thank you, Equinox. Yeah, yes, thank, thank you, you Equinox, Equinox, located in beautiful downtown Kenosha on Sixth Avenue A. Fifty nine. Yeah, right there. And what's up next? Oh my God! Ring a ding, 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 dong! It's trivia time, and it's brought to you by Union Park Tavern. This Friday, get on down to Union Park Tavern, forty five twenty Eighth Avenue, for their famous fish fry. Voted best in Kenosha for the last nine years. But that's not all. Union Park Tavern is serving up great food seven days a week, including their weekend brunches starting at 8 a.m. And if you enjoy live music, they have you covered there as well with open mic night, piano jams, karaoke, and some of the greatest local and regional acts. 
Also, be sure to check out their beer garden, one of the best-kept secrets in Kenosha. That's Union Park Tavern, 4520 8th Avenue. So we got trivia coming up. We're doing this is a little twist. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, what's we're, going on we're changing it up for this season. Usually uh, it's always season. Donnie versus the guest. And then we're changing it. It's going to be Hill versus Jason. I came up with some trivia questions. Well, how about Donnie versus Jason, and I'll read them. Hey, 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 hey. Donnie came up with the questions, so I think it might be a little uh, So I got some questions about uh, hot rods. <laughs> oh, oh so boy. We'll, All right. we'll oh. see how this goes. All Here right. We go. You know I'm a hot rod aficionado. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hill, don't lose. <laughs> now I'm gonna. All right, well, you know I drive a Toyota. Oh, that's right. That, yeah. It does have a that has a V12 in it, right? Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> sparks fly out of the back. And... All right, Jason, are you ready? We'll start with you. The hill can get the the hang of things. Here. Ah, okay. I can't all right, wait. Jason. Yes. Early hot rod communities sprung up all over during the Great Depression, hmm. but in what state did they were prevalent in? A, oh, Texas. Okay, I got choice, okay. yeah. A, Texas. <laughs> B, California. C, Florida. Or D, Michigan. Uh, hot rods. Uh, California. Ding, ding, ding. Really? Correct. All right. All, right. All right. Okay. One point for you. Uh, Hill, are you ready? Uh, yeah, I guess so. What is another name for hot rodding? A, power cars. B, Indy cars. C, Formula One. D, street rodding. Street riding. Correct. Final answer. <laughs> there we go. All right. One, one. Uh, okay. All right, Jason, are you ready? No. You sure? Okay, now I am. Okay. What famous car was often the vehicle of choice for early hot rodders? A, the Oldsmobile Curve Dash. B, the Chevrolet AA Capital. C, Smart Car. <laughs> D, Ford Model T. Uh... The Ford Model T. Oh, you are correct. Ding, wow. ding, ding, ding. Good guess. All right, Hill, you ready to tie this up? Let's do it. All right. Which American movie in the 1970s showcased hot rodding? A, The Deer Hunter. B, Dirty Harry. C, American Graffiti. Or D, Hot Rod. Oh, I know this one. Oh, geez, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to go with American Graffiti. You are correct, Hill. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. All right, Jason, are you ready? Yes. All right. In what city did the first ever hot rod exhibit take place? A, Miami, B, Little Rock, C, Austin, or D, Las Vegas? Well, everything happens in Las Vegas, doesn't it? <sighs> I'm sorry, it was Miami. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. I got a chance. Yes. Mm. All right, Hill. You ready? I'm ready. If someone came to a show with their new A-Bone, what vehicle would they drive up in? A, Chevrolet Corvette, B, Dodge Charger, C, Ford Model A, or D, Pontiac GTO? Did you say an A-Bone? Yes, A-Bone. Jeez, I don't know. Blue. Oh. <laughs> I tell you, it sounds like a new car problem. <laughs> I'm gonna. I tell you, I've got to pick one. So, uh, uh, let's let's go with the Corvette. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's no. Ford Model A. For oh for oh Model A A Bone. But you said a new one. Yeah, in in their new in their new. They make new model Ford Model A's. I got this from uh, Trivia.com. No, our problem is with you. I don't think you did. Oh, God, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> These things suck. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna end this. Okay. <laughs> Donnie's right. first and last time. Yeah. Trivia. It, just, it did yeah. not go well. All right. An A bone. Uh, <laughs> All right. What you got for me? What's All the right. A bone connected to? The B bone. <laughs> All right, Jason. The -bone. In the early 1970s, which engine did many hot rodders prefer? A small block Chevy V8. No. The Ecotec 1.5 liter hybrid engines, or should have had a VA engine? Isn't it A? I mean, is that supposed to be Hill's question? Because it seems like it's only A. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is A. It is A. Okay. Why are you giving me the easy ones? I, I'm just, they're all easy. I don't know about that. Oh, you couldn't even say the one. I don't know. <laughs> Was it three takes? <laughs> Spoiler alert for the Patron. Uh, all right, Hill. True or false? True. 
You are correct. All right. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. You ready for this one, Jason? Tied up. Look three, at your scribbles here. It's three, three. Oh, tied up. Three, you. three. <laughs> All in right. what year did the National Hot Rod Association form? A, 1909, B, 1952, C, 1981, D, 2000. The first one. No. 1909. You, no. 1922. Nope. 1936. 1952. Oh, okay. That's my next answer. All you, right, Hill. That would have been a good next hmm. answer. Yeah, I thought it was earlier than that. Hill, you can win this here. Are you ready to win? I'm ready to You're win. You're ready to win. <laughs> B. <laughs> because ice cream has no bones <laughs> which of these statements best describe what a hot rod is a a modified version of a normal street car b a car only for museum floors c a car race in the indiana in the indy 500 or a burnt up hot dog <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what i do like my burnt hot dog <laughs> um, <laughs> Grill it extra. I'm going to go with A on that one. You are correct. A modified version of a normal streetcar. All right. All right. We have hey. a winner there. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Hey, thank you. Thank and you. the winner was not me for doing that trivia. <laughs> looks like we're going to go back to what we used to do. Oh, I mean, I have to do it again? Oh, boy. Hill, so congratulations on winning. You win a free coffee with any purchase at... Common Grounds, located off of... 5159 6th Avenue. It's a great coffee house with an unbelievable view of the harbor, offering tasty <laughs> sandwiches, delicious espresso, and coffee drinks. Ooh-wee, Hill. Yeah. Free I, coffee with any purchase. Well, Ed. that is a nice place. Yeah, that is yeah. a fantastic place. So Been there a lot of years, too. Yeah, it's over 20 years. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was great for my first and only time of doing the trivia. First and last. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so glad I got it out of the way with you, Hill. I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, we have to take a moment to thank our other sponsors. And we're going to thank... Uh, Lucci's Grandview. Faded Barbershop for Men. Downtowner Saloon. Luigi's Pizza Kitchen. The Lettering Machine. Common Grounds. Equinox. Bluehorn Digital. Union Park Tavern. And Carbox. Oh, we got some great sponsors this year. Yeah, we really do. Well, we mixed it up some, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, we we're changing it got up. Some bars, got the. Uh, there's some things shop, we're changing, the... and there's some things we're just going to go back to. <laughs> <laughs> well, Speaking he'll... of going back to. Let's go back to Hill. Let's plug uh, Hill's Hot Rod Hideout one last time. Hill, you're located at uh, 4327 17th Avenue. Go in there. Open uh, Tuesday through Sunday. Mondays through Mon Saturdays. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Mondays through Saturdays. Close Sundays for the time being. For the time being, yeah. Right? Maybe this fall. So go on in, play, uh, have some darts, play some pool, some pinball. Have a good time. Um, Hill, thanks for joining us. And you know what? We'll see you over at the bar one of these days. Yeah, well, thanks for having yeah. me. It's been a, a very good time, and I uh, hope everyone enjoyed listening. Oh, cool. yeah, I, I, they did. Yeah. Well, if they made it this far, I'm sure they enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, they made it through that trivia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it usual that you do this without wearing pants all the time? Because I'm kind of weirded out here. <laughs> oh, there's our intro. <laughs> all right, and uh, Jason, uh, you know, that was a great show, but I'm trying to think, what are we doing here? we got to think of a different way to end this. Uh, it just sticks so good, doesn't it? We're connecting Kenosha. You are correct. Yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> I'm from Kenosha, I say Kenosha, that great big busy town. Right in the middle of the USA, between the New York Harbor and the San Francisco Bay. I'm from Kenosha, say Kenosha, that great big busy town. Wait, you weren't recording that, were you? Oh, I was. Ah, oh. Like <laughs> <laughs> With a record, I didn't. Uh. <laughs>